Turtle and Hughes presents The Power of Partnerships. All right, so just start out. Um, what's your name and just a little bit about you? I was like, I watch a guy that does a lot of podcasts and he always says your origin story. You know, about you. Where'd you grow up? What got you into this business? And whatever you got. So my name is Mike Savino, uh, currently a superintendent in Manhattan for JRM Construction Management. Um, I've got in construction when I was 17 years old. Okay. I'm now 40. Okay. So <laughs> I've, I've been in a long time and uh, Scarily enough, I still have a long time to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I uh, started residentially. I live in Eastern Long Island. Okay. So a town called Shoreham. Okay. It's exit 68 off the expressway. Pretty far. Pretty far. Right. So it's never even heard of it. <laughs> so basically, I'm like a robot with my commute. Okay. It's two hours each way, four hours a day, sometimes six days a week. Okay. It's gotten better now. It's usually five. Train? Train. Yeah, okay. So my first three years, it was funny. I, I uh, kind of laughed at everybody. took the train. I'm like, I'll never take the train. I'm driving. And then as those years went on, it, it just kept getting congested and congested. And I'm like, you know what? I think I got assigned to a job in Brooklyn. And I was like, I'm taking the train. Yeah. And then I was like, why would I never not take the train? Yep. Yep. You know, you'd sleep, have a couple of beers. Yep. Yep. Get, it, was, it was brilliant. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, you know, I've been, I've been now commuting on the Long Island Railroad for over 10 years. Okay. Uh, so, uh, straight so, through like beginning of COVID and everything, or did you drive when COVID, when COVID hit, I went back to driving. Okay. So we, we were fortunate enough to work through most of it. Okay. We were shut down kind of for like three months. My, okay. my other company, not JRM. Okay. Um, they were not essential, I guess. The work not essential. Okay. We tried to get some of the projects deemed essential, but that was very dicey, yep. but we did work from home for as long as we could. Okay. So we left in March, we came back in July. So during the months where I was going to check the site and such, I was driving in and it was kind of like mind blown. Cause easy. it was easy weird, drive. Yeah. Like easy drive. <laughs> yeah. And then you drive into Manhattan and it's quiet. Yeah. Yep. It was kind of like the twilight zone. Yeah. It's yeah. kind of what I compare it to, like yeah. driving in and out and being in Manhattan for 15 years to drive in over a bridge to nothing yourself. Yeah. Yep. You know, and, yeah. and plying it up everywhere and nobody in the streets. I was yeah. like, I remember one time I shut my radio off, rolled windows down and I was just taking it all in. And I was like, what is what going on? on? Yeah. What's what happening? Yeah. Like, what, what are we living in? Right. It was like mind boggling. Yeah. So, um, but the commute's easy. It's, 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 uh, and it's beneficial now as a super because I could get a lot of work done in that two hours. Okay. You know, yeah. instead of staying in the city till six o'clock at night, yeah. I could get on a train at four, yeah. work for yeah. a couple hours with the computer yeah. and be efficient. So, okay. um, cool. that part of it's pretty cool. Okay. So I started residentially then, um, and I built houses all over Long Island. Okay. We had like a team of guys. It was awesome. That's kind of where I got my base and figured out that it was my passion. Okay. And you were um, physically doing it at that age. You were yeah. Building. Physically building, yeah. um, from foundations to roofs, okay. interiors. We did, it was, it was a really great learning experience. Okay. I mean, you're, you're direct there, right? Yep. Um, and I was actually doing very well for myself. Um, let's see, it was, I was 20, 27. So 27 dates back to when the recession hit. Okay. One of the recessions, I should uh, say. I guess that was 2007 or eight. Yeah. Yep. yep. And my, I'll never forget it. My boss kind of came to us and was like, "Hey, um, we're at work." And I'm like, "What do you mean we're at work?" Yeah. You know, everybody pulled their money. So, long story short, my father was always uh, chasing me to get into the union. Okay. And I was like, "Dad, I'm not getting. Into, I'm making two thousand dollars a week cash. Why? I don't need any of that. I wasn't married. I didn't." Have, so I, you know, he had passed away at, at the time before that, and I just kept hearing it in my ear, and I was like, you know, let me go down to the union. Yeah. So I went, and uh, I could have gotten in as a full book because of my experience, but I also didn't really know what the union was about. So I was like, you know, let me just do the apprenticeship. Uh -huh. So I went from making two thousand dollars a week cash to making five and change on the books, uh -huh. which was like, I mean, thank God I was living with my mom at the time, and. Uh, <laughs> So then yeah, I took my apprenticeship in Long Island and once I was done, it's four years, I ended up getting my full book and moving my book to Local 45, okay. which and is- Carpenter's Union. Carpenter's Union. Okay, got it. Right. 
Um, and then I really, I became a foreman right away and I was okay. basically running projects and all over the city. So that was, you know, again, quick learning curve for okay. four years and then kind of thrown out to the wolves to do now the other end of it. Yeah. You know, it was so much different than building a house in Long Island yeah. and coming out here to these big commercial spaces. <laughs> yeah. What was the first project you worked on in the city as a foreman, do you remember? The first project in the city was, in the well, yeah, in the boroughs would be in the Bronx and okay. it was Bay Plaza Mall. Okay. Big nice. mall out there. Yeah. Uh, awesome. Awesome project. I was like second in command there. That was like my tryout per se. Okay. So there was a foreman at the time and I was underneath him and he was showing me the ropes, but we were there for, I think it was, I want to say two years. Okay. Very cool. Okay. And then I ended up from there, right across the street is AMC movie theater. Okay. I built that out. Oh, nice. So that was, it was like a learning curve and then bam, yeah. right to that. Yep. Okay. So nice. Okay. Yeah. And were you, as a foreman on that size project, were you physically doing still or did you move more, not office, but paperwork? It, that's that? where it's like projects that size, that's where it kind of transferred over to a little bit more paperwork. Okay. And it's not, not, I wouldn't say even more paperwork. It was more the internal paperwork for the company, making sure all the men were where they needed to be yeah. and making sure to hit the schedule. Okay. So it was more so tracking schedules, tracking man hours and where everything was yeah. um, okay. with, with that side of it. And which part do you like better? physically doing it or I guess even now what you do as a superintendent? Now what I do as a superintendent, um, the way I feel is I put my time in. Mm -hmm. uh, it's hard for me not to want to do something, mm -hmm. yep. if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm always kind of like, I could do that, but then I'm like, I, you yeah. don't, you're, you don't need, you you're paying somebody to do yeah. it. Like you, your company is paying somebody to do that. You yeah. don't have to. So I enjoy the more professional side of it okay. than the physical side of it at this okay. point. Okay. Nice. But before you, when you first started, you liked physically. Oh, I loved it. Yeah, yeah. You know, and even as a super now, like I don't, I don't sit at the desk. I'm, no. I'm next to you in the field. Right. I'm, yeah. I'm carrying a piece of plywood with somebody. Yeah. You know, I, that part of it I'll never let go. Okay. Wanting to be in the trenches yeah. live. I feel like that's my strong point. Okay. You know, okay. being next to somebody. Okay. And what, it, uh, superintendent, what are you actually doing? Like to me, that's the guy that's running the project, not a project management side, but you're running the men and making sure the job is done correctly. Is that right? Yeah. That's, I mean, that's basically right. Yeah. We're, we're on the schedule of the job, like a hundred percent from the get go. Okay. And we track that the entire job. Like that is our Bible. Okay. So okay. we are full coordination of the project's activities, the manpower, um, deliveries, building rules and regulations, okay. that part of it. We do, at least the JRM get fully involved in a lot of the project management side where it comes to submittals, okay. RFIs, okay. that type of paperwork. Yeah. Okay. Um, because it, it almost makes sense because we're there. Yeah. yeah. You know? okay. Are you involved in the upfront of planning that schedule or is it more of, okay, we got the job, here's the schedule, you know, go up, go at it. We're involved. So there's, there's kind of like a, there's a, how do I say it? There's a department that does the scheduling prior to us, hey, Mike, you're now the super on the project. But once we're named the super, we get that schedule and we kind of, you know, chop it up. Okay. Whereas it makes sense, like some of the stuff might be generic. So we kind of get rid of that. And per superintendent, how you run your project, now we adjust the schedule to our liking okay. with our leadership yeah, kind yeah. of behind us and, and with fully involved in with their input. Okay, got it. And how many jobs are you running? And you have to depend on the size of them? Like Depends on the size. If they're smaller projects, I, I guess you could say anywhere from like 2,000 square feet to 10,000 square feet, we might yeah. be running two, okay. three, and then it's proximity, you know, okay. area. Okay. Like right now, I'm fortunate enough to be close where I can, you know, tackle two, one big one. Got it as far as scope of work, but it's a smaller footprint. Okay. And then another job, you know, close, maybe 15 minutes away. Okay. But for the most part, it depends on the square footage. I would say anything over, you know, in, in the 20,000 square feet, you're probably just running it solo. Just one. Okay. Just one. I would JR on there, mostly, mostly commercial fit out, right? Is that correct what they do? Yeah. So commercial fit out, I would say is 
maybe our strongest point, okay. but we do everything. Okay. I mean, we have our own corn shell sector. Okay. So that handles all the corn shell building okay. that we're doing. Meaning new rock projects out of the ground. Out of the ground okay. or extensions like we just did the movie theater down on um, 6th Avenue. I forget the name of it, but it was beautiful. Um, we put it like basically did like a dorm where we added floors to it. Okay. We did it, you know, really awesome project. Right. So, or out of the ground. Okay. And we're doing retail. We do a lot of retail projects, restaurants, um, like Carl Hart, okay. clothing line kind of stores. Um, so we really have our hands in everything. Got it. Okay. Okay. Um, going back a little, you said when you started at 17 and when you got into it. So I feel like I, I follow out on like LinkedIn people that are trying to get more younger people into the trades and it's just not happening. Is there, do you agree? Do you see less getting involved? Do you think? There's a way to improve that. I, I think. I thoughts on it. Yeah, I think it's kind of getting tickled a little bit now, okay. whereas it's it's becoming a little more normal to maybe talk about what we're talking about, okay. like instead of forcing children to go to college oh, and yeah. intern at these businesses, you know, what about the trades? Yeah. You know, why? Yeah. What about coming up in the trades? And it's a forgotten uh, skill set yeah. coming up as a young yeah. adult. I would yeah. say. I mean, I didn't even realize, like, my high school, I like, went to wood shop, metal shop, drafting, I don't know what else. And from what I understand now, that's all gone. Like, the wood shop is gone, metal shop's gone, drafting, it might still draft, but wood shop, metal shop, definitely gone. Yeah. Have you seen that in being out on Is it similar? I'm from. It's very similar. Okay. It's more like behind the scenes, which is yeah. a shame. Yep. It okay. shouldn't be behind the scenes. Yeah. I mean, fortunately, everything I've been blessed with my entire life has been through my work uh -huh. and yeah. you know I'm very fortunate yeah, yeah, yeah. house children yeah. cars yep. you know I don't we don't do without and it's because of this industry right yep. so I hope and, and I guess it's going to take things like this and, and that's where I guess social media and technology kind of put that to the back seat but now is the opportunity to kind of push right. it now yeah. a little more to yeah. the middle get it to the front right. mainstream yep because it's a shame, I, I mean, and I, I do believe that like my son's generation, he's 10, okay. I think he'll, it's gonna take some time, but I think that generation will be the ones that dip back in for okay. that. Okay, yeah, I saw something just the other day, I think it was on LinkedIn, and it would show kind of a side-by-side -side comparison of two people graduating high school, and it was, okay, these people are in, someone that went to trade school is making money along the way, where someone in college is building debt along the way. So by the end of the four years, this person has made all this money and now can step up to like a four-year apprenticeship or something. This person is at negative ninety thousand dollars in debt and have no work experience. Right. And it's like, what? It doesn't make sense. Like, why are so many people doing that? And I'm a big advocate for not college. Right. And it's just, I mean, I went to college and did two county college and a four-year college. Um, even got my master's degree, but I, I don't use it. My diplomas and a draw somewhere in my house, I'm sure, <laughs> but it, it hasn't helped me. I, I don't think it's helped me in any way of my career at all. It's just experience has helped me and that's it. It's kind of built on that. So, right. Yeah. Hopefully they just, I don't know, like I said, hopefully anything with social media, people will see, um, the trade more. Like I think we want, like I said, towards social media and just building in social media and that not the trade, but now hopefully you can see the trade in social media and want to be more involved in it. So. Right. And I, I think LinkedIn is, is a great outlet for it because yeah. it's, it's businesses and I think that'll kind of shape this idea to push it a little further, yeah. you know, whereas, you know, young adults in high school or just coming out of high school or in their first year of college, they're not looking for these internships with JP Morgan Chase. Maybe it's with Turtle and Hughes. Maybe it's with JR. We have a great program okay. and, and these kids, they rave about it. Okay. You know, they come in, it's live, yeah. you know, they get paid yeah. and they learn and, and a lot of them get fired from us. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's like you said, like, why wouldn't you do it? Yeah. yeah. And you're not, and no debt. Yeah. 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 You know, I, I just, I think I just finished paying. I went to school too. Yeah. yeah. And I, it was two years uh -huh. and you know, I, I went the wrong route of dropping <laughs> out and I didn't know about, you know, you couldn't just drop out. Yeah. So I had student loans yeah. and I never paid them. So what, long story short, I just got out of that. And yeah. it's like, 
cases. Yeah, yeah. You hear like people that are lawyers. I mean, maybe they make more money as a lawyer, but the debt they accumulate is like hundreds of thousands per year. It's like you come out and you're right. a million dollars or something in debt. How do you make that up? Like you're paying that off forever. Correct. You pay that off longer than paying off your house. Yeah. And it's just forever. It stays with you. So I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. I, I mean, it's also good. I, I think it's good for, especially for college kids trying to get into this as a project manager, as a mm-hmm. super, an estimator, whatever it is on that office side. If you're looking towards that internship, you're getting the field experience. Right. And that's super important. Yeah. You know, that's where I leverage the industry. Mm-hmm. I was live. I know how to deal with this mixed bag of emotions of manpower and, and clientele and you know that's hard and yeah. if you don't it's very difficult because these young guys come in and girls come in and and they feel like they got to prove a point yeah. and it's like no but if you took an internship yeah. with a company in there yep. you have a little bit of background yeah yep yeah so you can't read about it in a book you gotta just do yeah. it so. exactly yep. Yep. okay um just a little bit about JRM, I guess. Um, I know you haven't been there too long, so about two years. Two years, yeah. Um, do you know their history, how they started, like what their background is? I know it started in 2007. There was a couple, okay. I think it was like a two company situation where they joined forces okay. and wanted to, you know, jump the industry mainstream and they became chair of construction management, okay. uh, construction manager. And right after that, that's when they started also the corn shell sector. Okay. And I know that the, that my bosses have known each other for a very long time. I think it's probably like 14, 15 years now. Okay. Got it. So. Okay. And you said construction management. So what's the difference? Do they only do construction management? What, what would you describe the difference between construction management and general contracting? So, and I could be somewhat wrong, but from my experience and what I know about it is, you know, as a general contractor, you're basically hired and the project's designed already. Everything's kind of in place and it's kind of like, all right, here you go. You're the general contractor, do it, yeah. right? And whereas a construction manager, we're like part of the team. Mm-hmm. It's like we're all sitting at the table and the design is not fully done. Okay. And we come in and we try to pull a lot of, you know, cost out of it. Projects okay. with our resources. Yeah. That, that's a construction manager. We take all of our resources and our experience and we start to try to pull in those costs for a client and again be part of the team from the beginning to the end. Okay. And I think that that's that makes construction managers um, I guess more valuable. Okay, got it. Bringing their expertise to, like you said, save some cost to the client and Right. Get the project done on time. And just make it like a smooth process. You know, taking all that in as the construction manager, kind of making it seamless. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. Um, How do you guys, how are you dealing with like hiring people? Like we're talking about younger kids and everything. How is the labor force lately? Like I feel every company is struggling to get labor. Is that, do you see that as well? I think what's happening now is it's, I'll adjust what you said and I'll say it's very hard to find good labor. Oh, okay. But you because right now, I know of multiple companies, and you could see it even on LinkedIn. Mm-hmm. They're hiring. Yeah. We're hiring. Yeah. Um, the work is booming right now. Yeah. I mean, it yep. is busy everywhere. Yep. Retail, especially, yeah. super busy. So the the process of hiring is going well. There's a lot of applicants. I think there's a. I've spoken to many people in the industry. There's there's many applicants. It's just really finding the right ones, right ones. Okay. and okay. ones that are actually going to last, yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. again, to go back to kind of the experience and, and degree, yeah. you can portray yourself as something very good. We can all do it, especially yeah. with social media. You yeah. could be somebody yeah. totally different, but yeah. when you and I are sitting at a table, yeah, yeah. The, the truth is going to come out. Yeah. yeah. Or so, you're in the field with a hammer and, and right. what do you do then? Yeah. Right. So it, it's, um, it's finding good labor. It's finding workers that actually want to put the time in. You know, everybody now wants to go from point A to point B right yep. away. Yep. One year, six months. You know, it's scary. Started. Yeah. That whole, that feeling of like, you deserve that. Yeah. No, you, you have to put your time yeah. in. Yeah. Yeah. You said you've been doing it for 20 something years now. Yeah. And it doesn't, it doesn't have to be 20 years. Like, you know, four, five, yeah. you know, just go through the motions, yeah. you know, and, and it's once this workforce that's currently in right now, when, when they feel like they're not 
getting what they deserve or what they want, you know, then they start to lack, get lackstaisical, who's not showing up to work, yeah. and looking for other opportunities. So it's very dicey right now okay. for companies hiring. Okay, got it. And with the people you're hiring, like I guess that you're running those jobs, what are they actually doing? Like as, as the superintendent, what is JRM contributing to the project? Like what are those guys physically doing? Like I know like we sell to electricians who are you know twisting the wires and doing that. I know you guys aren't doing that, but what are your guys actually doing on site typically? So where our days are basically like right away checking everybody in. So we're very big on safety. Okay. Like you have to be big on safety, especially in in Manhattan, and just for your own well being mm -hmm. as a as a super. Yeah. You you want to go home safe. You want your entire team, and that's from the top to the bottom, whoever's on the project to go home safe. Okay. So we do pre-test planning. That's like the most important thing for us at JRM. Okay. Daily, we do it every single trade. Okay. Everybody gets, we have our pamphlet, everybody gets it. As a super, we review it, what, okay. what you're gonna be doing for the day. So it's for a, each trade, even though each trade. there's a separate, an electrician on site, you're reviewing what they're gonna do. Every trade gets their own okay. uh, daily pre-test plan. Okay. And this way we know what's happening yeah. uh, and then we could collectively get together with, with how to approach it safely. Okay. Nice. And, and uh, that's a daily activity okay. um, with every single trade. So that's number one. Number two is then, you know, having schedule and making sure that each piece and each trade is where they have to be. Okay. And if they're not, why? Okay. Why aren't they there? Yeah. You know, and then it's a lot of, okay, calling this guy, calling the super for them. Well, the project manager for this. So it's a lot of communication every day. Okay, got it. And we have to, you know, you have to be live. You have to walk the site. You can't, you know, as a super, you can't sit at a desk. There's no such thing as a super that can yeah. sit at a desk and efficiently yeah. run a job. Yeah, you gotta see what's going on. You have to, and that, that's the difference between superintendent and project manager. Okay. As a project manager, you could very well sit at the desk, and yeah. a lot of them don't, but yeah. that's, you know, you can. You can yeah. be in the office. A lot of our project managers have a nice desk yes, at the office. Yeah, yep. I don't think there's any supers that have desks. Yeah, yeah, and yep. if they do, I'm jealous. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. And it, so are your guys doing any, um, like the carpenters, they're hanging, you know, build the framing, the wall, the drywall, that, and you guys get involved in any of that or that's separate trades that's all passed off to them, plumbing, same thing? Yeah, we just, we basically oversee it, okay. you know, communicate what needs to happen. On, and we also, the, the, another most important part of our thing is a weekly um, subcontractor meeting. Okay. So we'll set up once a week at least, sometimes twice a week, depending on the size of the job, where now all the trades, separate trades come in together. Mm -hmm. So that's where it actually comes in together. Everybody sits down. Now that we're away from COVID, it's, it's, yeah. it was very difficult during COVID because okay. nobody would come. Right. Well, now a lot of people are coming to the site. Okay. So we sit down, everybody reviews the schedule, and it's great because you kind of get a harmony going. Yeah. And is that like the PMs from those subcontractors or the superintendents or foremen? Or... It's a mix. Okay. We we'll always want the foreman there because the foreman is the one that's building with me. Yeah. So he's as good as the super at that yeah. point because we're together. Yeah. Uh, and then it could be either the project manager or the super at, at that time. Got it. Okay. Um, what do you, what's like, for you personally or your position, what's like the biggest pain point? Like what's the most difficult or common or most annoying thing you deal with on a regular basis? I think since COVID, it's supply and demand. Okay. It's, very, <laughs> it's very simple, it's very difficult. Yeah. You know, a lot of things and at JRM, we do a very great job internally at the office of setting up these tracking logs of long lead items. That's what we yep. call them, long lead items. So we're not surprising uh, any of our clients. But scarily enough, I think they're aware of it as well now too, because it's so bad with certain things like wall covering, certain wood floors, like we do a lot of high end work. Okay. So a lot of that material is coming from Italy. Yeah. It's coming on freights. Okay. So that's not the way to that we they could tell us it's coming Tuesday. Yeah. And like Monday, we could get a call out. like, oh, the boat is stuck in the, the dock. Yeah. Yep. It's not coming for two weeks. Like how? Yeah. It's tough. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. That, that uneasiness is the biggest headache okay. and trying to stay, like it's now when, when we meet, we have to have a backup plan and then a backup backup plan. Yeah. Yep. And not that it helps, but knowing it's going to be late is better than not knowing at least, right? Just yes. having the information. Like I said, not finding out on Monday that it's not coming tomorrow. It'd be nice to know two weeks ahead of time, hey, that 
Tuesday is not really going to happen. It's going to be two weeks later. Right. Yeah. And it's pulling, it's also pulling that out of our subcontractors, yeah. like having them understand, like, listen, we're on the same team. Yeah. Yeah. You're not my enemy. Yeah. yeah. Just please tell me the truth. And I literally plead with some of these yeah. people, like, just tell me. Yeah. I'd rather you, like you said, Tell me it's gonna be late now, yeah. so we're not two days prior, and then I'm trying to scatter. Because yeah. you're building, yeah, you're planning. Okay, if you say it's gonna be here this day, that's what I'm planning on. So give me a head of, heads up. It's not gonna be here, and we'll plan accordingly. Right. We're, it's not a competition. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm not your boss. Yeah. We're we are on a project. We are a team. Yeah. Without you, I don't do it. So yeah. let's figure out. It doesn't make you, and that that's I guess what people really need to start understanding in our positions is it, it doesn't make you look bad. Mm -hmm. yeah. If something is not deliverable, it's not your fault. That's out of your control. But let's all, you know, let, let's all help each other. Right. Yep. Cause at the end of the day, if I'm winning, you're winning, if you're winning, I'm winning. Yep. So let's just do it together. And it's that separation for some reason, uh, that I specifically now bite right away with the, my first meeting. I, I'm looking you in your eye. I'm saying, yeah. You're on my team. Tell me, yeah, tell me the Just truth. let me know. Yep. Just let me know. Yeah. Put the ball in my court. Let me help. Yeah. Yep. You know, I'm I'm a I'm a we guy, yep. not a me guy. Yep. Yeah. You know, so let's do it together. Yeah. And yeah. if you can't find it, let give me the number. Let me try. Yeah, I'm on plenty of emails lately with typically it's only the electrical contractor, but the past six months now the general contractor, the owner is on there, just full disclosure. Look, here's what's happening. It's not the EC's fault. It's not the G's. It's, you know, this is what's happened. Supply chain stuff. Just, right. you know, the copper is not available or whatever. It's just not there. Yeah. There's nothing we can do about it. Yeah. And you'd be amazed kind of if you, like, I remember one of my projects, it happened to me. The wall covering wasn't coming in like a week prior. I get the, I get the call. Oh no. It's like, I think they said six weeks out. I was like, you, did you just say six? Yeah, we can't find it. I'm like, but you've been telling me this whole time. And again, I have it in writing, and but that doesn't matter. Even though I have it in writing, we still have to get the project done. Yep. So now it's like me scattering. I'm Googling, Google, Google. Yeah. Like Google's the best thing ever, right? Yeah. So I literally remember I sat down one day and I was Googling. I cold, cold, I was cold calling. I was like a telemarketer. And I remember walking out of the building, almost defeated, and I'm like, I'm not going to lose. I can't lose. So I went back in. I literally made one more search. I called the person, and she's like, oh, I have 4,000 yards. I'm like, I'll take it. Dang, this is the greatest, like, you don't know me, but I love you, you know? So it's just going that extra mile. And that's why I say, like, everybody, you know, people need to understand on a project, you're really a team. Yeah. Yep. Makes sense. Yep. Uh, maybe, maybe answer this next question or comment is, what do you, what can be improved? What do you see personally that could, you know, what can JRM do better or just the industry as a whole? Like, what can make it better? Any ideas you have or things that you see that could do better and yeah, I think it's I think it's uh, developing very fast. Okay. The industry itself, I mean, the, the, and I've been in it for a long time, so I've, I'm I'm seeing it live. Where I, I would say the training part of it, okay. I think every company can benefit from training their employees. Again, okay. it's not a bad look if you're getting trained for something. Okay. Yeah. You know, whether you're in high school or it's you and me at 40 years old, I feel like you can always learn something, right? Yeah. Yep. So I would say JRM, anybody, any any of these GCs or construction managers can benefit giving their employees some kind of better training, right? Okay. Um, that's one big thing. And then I think another big thing is to really push the team mentality. And that's something JRM actually does very well is that we have project teams. Okay. And I think that's something also touching back on the construction management side is that's a benefit to the client. You'll get a team of people and right. it's a project manager, it's a super, it's a project director, but it's more so pushing that we mentality right. and understanding that if you're making a mistake, it's okay. Right. Yep. You know? fix it and be, exactly. own up to it. I was just telling somebody, a young, I was actually proud of the guy. We were doing a project this morning, I was there and it was a young, I said, how old are you? He was an electrician, he was 21 years old. First thing I said, and I've watched him for a couple of days, and I said, you know, I'm proud of you. And he kind of giggled, and I said, no, because, you know, you're here. I see you're working. Yeah. You seem eager to learn. Yeah. That's great. You don't see that right now in your age bracket, yep. you know? And, and then I literally said to him that one of the first foremen I worked for when I got in as an apprentice, he saw me struggling, and he came to me, and he said, kid, he's like, it's not how bad you screw up. It's how fast you fix it. 
Okay. I've taken it my whole career. Yeah. And I'll, I'll tell you, I'll, I tell everybody. Yeah. Yeah. And it literally just doesn't, you have to, in this industry, you have to understand you're going to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. yep. And I'd say that's another one. Know you're going to make mistakes. Okay. Understand it. And don't let it crush you. Yeah. A, lot, a lot of people let it crush them and then they take it home with them. Yeah. It's not that important. Yeah. Yep. You, yep. you know, yep. it just yep. isn't. You have backup. Yep. You have teammates. Lean on them. Yeah. You yep. know, just get that team mentality and, and move forward. Yeah. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Ex exactly. Yep. yep. Last thing I want to bring up off topic completely, but your wife's bike ride. I saw yeah. it like that. Let me tell you. It was <laughs> 102 um, miles. 102 miles. Uh, she's she's a warrior, you know, amazed. And I'm not just saying it because she's my wife, because a lot of people doubted her. Right. She she had done it one year, uh, and she, it was it was horrendous. She got into a wreck. Um, some other biker ran into her. She fell over the bars, and she got hurt. Okay. And then COVID hits, and she wasn't able to do the second year. It was very like thrown together, and then. In anticipation, COVID goes away that this year was going to be the year. Yeah. Then the surgeries happened. Okay. You know, all of a sudden she was in pain, two torn laborers. Like, and now the people start coming out of the woodwork saying, "You can't do this. Uh -huh. You can't do it." And listen, I'm I'm a true believer in mind over matter. Uh -huh. And if you really want to do something, put your mind to it. You're going to do it. Yep. You beat your physical. You be the strongest guy physically or or girl physically, but if there's somebody across the table that is mentally tough. They're gonna beat you every time. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So it was the it was the it was a, a knockdown drag out process of her going kind of through a little bit of depression of like, am I gonna really be able to do it? And I said, Chris, let's just take it one day at a time. Go to the doctors, and she did. She recovered from it. And it was a very tough rehab from the two torn labrums. She rehabs, ready to train, starts to train. Her back starts acting up. Now we're talking. This is now her first surgery. I think was in January. Second surgery. Now that I'm speaking of happens in May, okay. races in September. So it's just it, right? Like two weeks ago? Yeah. yeah. So um, they look, now her spine's messed up, bulging discs. Um, in my mind, I'm like, wow, this is now this is bad. Yeah. This is gonna be, I, I kind of doubted myself, but she really took the forefront of being focused and together with her doctors and myself, and she did the training and okay. she did it. Okay. And where was it? Where did she start? Where she finished? started in Brooklyn. So they go over the Brooklyn Bridge. Okay. Oh, they're headed east. Yep, heading okay. east, and okay. it ends up basically where we live, exit sixty-eight. But there's Smith Point Beach. That's okay. the beach that they literally ride to. Okay. And it was uh, she did it. Okay. Nice. Really awesome. You know where it's it's an inspiration where you know you just can't accept somebody telling you you can't do anything. Right. right. Yeah. Okay. You know, and I think that's that could be our big takeaway in general, but, but more so for our industry is that you just, if you, and it's more so now, I think a lot of people take what's happened with COVID very negatively and they're stuck on it. And I would say, get unstuck, yeah. like take advantage of the fact that right now, literally around us, if you really want it right, like right now, and I'm talking from now to about five years, you can have whatever you want. Yeah. Yep. But you have to go back to that mentality of putting the work in, yeah. yep. being like hard work pays off yeah. yep. and tenacity, hard work, yep. only the strong survive. Yeah. That's where, that's where we're at right now. And if people start to grasp that fast, we're going to be all right. Yeah. Yeah. I know he's a bit extreme, but like David Goggins, I don't know if follow him at all. <laughs> Me and my buddy, we are, we are Goggins, yep. you know, we're constantly sending each other. Yep. All just for construction, we're sending each other Goggins uh, videos. Yeah, yeah. He's, you know, uh, like <laughs> he's out there. He's that all mental or man. He's did those races. I'm sure he's getting broken bones. Oh yeah, all feet broken bones. But it's and it's there you go. Like why can't you be a Goggins? Yeah. Why can't I be? We can. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. just have to literally choose to do it. Yeah, yeah. There's nothing unique about him. He just decided to do it. So right. Mental, so yeah. So it's breaking that. It's breaking that barrier right now. To uh, and a lot of people. There's going to be like a 50-50. A lot of people are going to benefit very, very well from it. And a lot of people, unfortunately, are going to fall way behind because the wave that we're in right now, and you should know it, anybody in New York City, it's going to die down. Yeah. It's not going to go away, yeah, yeah. but it's going to, it's you know, down. slopes yeah. itself down. Yep. And then if you're part of that bracket that's stuck, yeah, that are doubting yourself or whatever, the case, or not being a team player, yeah. people are taking mental notes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're going to be the first one to go yeah. and you're going to be sitting there like regretting, like, can't yeah. 
Yeah. Can't live that regret. Yeah. Jump on it. Like, jump on it right now. Like, if anybody's watching, like, kids right now in school, like, now's the time. Yeah, I agree. It doesn't have to be construction. It, it's really anything, but we're talking about construction. The industry is booming. I mean, from top to bottom, any trade. I know that everybody's looking right now. Yeah. Yep. Everybody's looking for good talent, young talent, hungry talent, people yeah. that want to learn, that want to be team players. Like, yeah. the time is now. I agree. Cool. All right, I appreciate it. That's all I got. Anything else to add or? Well, one thing, one thing I wanted to say about Turtle and Hughes, quick, mm -hmm. was that I was I was on my LinkedIn. I think it was two days ago, and you guys you guys visited at a factory. I think it was an electrical factory out in Long Island. Like Sacco. Yes. yes. Yep. So I watched that video, and, and I bring it up because, and we talked about it earlier where you can't find things. Uh -huh. So it's yeah. something that I think is brilliant that you guys are doing is yeah. visiting these facts. Cause I'm yeah. like, in my mind, I'm like, wow, I'm gonna take a mental note or even write it down who yeah. this company is. Maybe I'm calling them yeah. for controls that I can't find. Yeah. And we wouldn't know that, but we, we have that because you guys are doing it and it's it's you're broadcasting on yeah. LinkedIn. And, and so kudos Good. to you guys. I appreciate it. thank you. Yeah, I, um, I was surprised I, I went out there and I was talking to the guy the night before and we were talking about lighting and I was talking about like, you know, lead times on stuff. And he's telling me, he's like, no, we have it in stock and it's here. And I'm like, what do you mean? Like, I, I didn't get it. Like, I just couldn't grasp that. Like, right. Wait, no, it's like four weeks, eight weeks. He's like, no, we have it all. I was like, yeah, but what do you have? Like just two by fours and one by four. He's like, no, we have everything, all kinds of decorative, architectural, everything. I'm like, you have all of it? I, I just, it Great, you shot some yeah. and I would be mind blown. Like, I, I just thought we were talking about something different. He was like, <laughs> you'll see tomorrow. Like, we have it. Whatever we sell and manufacture, we have. Like, yeah. there's no non stock and it's going to be manufactured. I was like, okay. And I went there. It was just big warehouse, floor to ceiling, boxes everywhere. It was just, it was impressive how full it was. They maximized every inch of the place. Right. I mean, I was blown away by the video. Yeah. I was like, wow. I mean, yeah. If they make it, they have it. I right. Mean, very few things. So, it, I mean, very few things they don't have. It's something like there's a problem if they don't have it. It's great. So, yeah. So, yeah. It's, it's really, cool. you know, it's great. I would say keep doing it because it's going to help guys like me. Cool. Okay. <laughs> All right. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. That was nice to meet you. Yeah. You as well.